Take God's Word, please, and turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1. And in a moment, we're going to begin reading God's Word beginning in verse 6. 2 Timothy chapter 1. And if you didn't bring a Bible with you this morning, look there in the pew rack before you. In all likelihood, there's one. And turn to it. I believe you'll always get so much more out of a message if you have an open Bible there in front of you. That is, if the preacher is preaching out of the Word of God. And speaking of preaching out of the Word of God, let me talk to you a little bit about the newspapers before I talk to you from uh, this text. Ann Landers is one that uh, people write to with their problems. And uh, not so long ago, Ann Landers reported that she gets more than 10,000 letters a month. Can you imagine? 10,000 letters, and all of them, or most of them, are dealing with problems. Do you know what the number one problem that people write to Ann Landers about is? And she said, I, I get more mail concerning this one problem than any other problem. Do you know what it is? It's fear. Fear. People are afraid. They're afraid of losing their wealth. They're afraid of losing their health. They're afraid of losing their friends. They're afraid of losing their family. They're afraid of what the foes might do to them. They're afraid of failure. They're afraid of this. They're afraid of that. And so if you distill these things down, Ann Landers says that permeating most of the letters she gets is this problem of fear. Now, I want to talk to you today about how to handle your fear. Actually, not only how to handle your fear, but how to conquer fear. But I don't want to tell you what Ann Landers has to say about it. I want to tell you about what God's Word has to say about overcoming fear and conquering fear and facing fear with faith and how to live a future free from the bondage of fear. All right, now, in 1 Timothy chapter 1, beginning in verse 6, I read these words. Paul is speaking to Timothy, and he says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee, by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Now as we get into this message, let me talk to you a little bit about... Uh, this bondage of fear. But before I really get into that even, let me tell you that you have to be careful to analyze fear because not all fear is bad. Some fear is good and some fear is productive and some fear is of God himself. Now, about 1933, Frank, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt said these immortal words, We have nothing to fear but fear itself. Now, those are beautiful words, but I don't agree with them. There's a lot to fear besides fear. I would never teach my children there's nothing to fear but fear itself as long as they're rattlesnakes and drunken drivers and rapists and muggers and, and uh, Memphis drivers. <laughs> I, I would never teach them that there's nothing to fear but fear itself. Fear is a productive, protective mechanism that God has put into all of us and that kind of fear, there's nothing wrong with it. It's very vital. It's very good. It has been, it is an instinct that God has put into us to help protect us and preserve us. So when I'm talking about fear, I'm not talking about that kind of fear. And then there are other kinds of fear that, um, you know, the Bible tells us. Jesus literally told us to fear on one occasion. He said, fear not him which is able to destroy the body, but is not able to destroy the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. Now, if you're not saved, you've got something to be afraid of, and I'm not trying to talk you out of it. I wish I could reinforce it today, uh, that I could show you, dear friend, that, that if you're facing uh, a future without God, you've got a lot to be afraid of. Jesus said you ought to be afraid. And somebody says, well, I just don't believe in, in frightening people into religion. Well, I'd rather frighten you into heaven than to lull you into hell. Jesus said, fear him who is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. And then also the Bible speaks of the fear of the Lord. That's a good fear. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That is, you don't have a modicum of sense unless you fear the Lord. Now, to fear the Lord doesn't mean that you cringe before God. 
Well, that's not the idea. The Bible word for fear there means reverence. You reverence the Lord. You have a holy respect for God. Now, an electrician, he has a fear of electricity if he's going to have a lot of longevity on the job, right? That doesn't mean he trembles every time he goes to work. But it does mean that he knows what's in those wires. And so he has a, a, a respect for that, that power. Now, that's, that's the idea of the fear of the Lord. There's, there's no, there's no uh, competition between fearing God and loving God. As a matter of fact, the man who fears God the most loves him the best. Do you know what? Let me give you a definition of the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is love on its knees. That's what it is. Just love on its knees. Uh, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is clean. It's not a filthy fear. It's a good fear. It's a, it's a very productive fear. So we're not talking about that kind of fear. We're talking about something that the Bible calls here a spirit of fear. Look in verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of uh, fear. This is a, a negative kind of fear that we would call a spirit of fear. Today, I guess we would call it a phobia. A phobia. We were psychologists or psychiatrists. We'd call it a phobia. The dictionary lists about 700 different kinds of phobias, beginning with A and ending with Z. Just phobias, fears of all kinds of things. Acrophobia, a fear of high places. Some people, you just can't get them up in a high place. I mean, no matter if there's a guardrail or anything else, they just have almost an inordinate fear of high places. And, and, and claustrophobia, fear of closed places. Some people, if you get them in a, in a room that's too small with no windows or doors, now look, friend, they, they get very, very nervous and after a while just almost have to get out. And the people have just the opposite. They have a, a fear called agoraphobia, which is a fear of open places. If they're out in an open field and there are no walls or anything to close them in, they get, they get frightened and they, they get nervous. The people who have an inordinate fear of, of getting sick have what we call pathophobia. They have fear of disease. Some of these people are constantly washing their hands. Now, we all wash our hands, but, you know, not all the time. And, and these people are, they, they, they're just, uh, they, they, they have this fear of sickness. I know a fear that a lot of people have, some here who are affected with it. It's called ergophobia, fear of work. <laughs> they just, man said, well, work never bothered me. I can lie down beside it and go to sleep. But uh, some people are afraid of, of work. And, and uh, some people have a, a fear of light, pathophobia, which is a fear of light. And I, I guess the worst fear of all is phobophobia, fear of fear. Some people are afraid they're going to be afraid, and so they constantly stay afraid because they're afraid they're going to be afraid. It's a terrible thing because it's a catch-22 type of thing, and they can't get out of this fear of fear. Well, now, these, the, you see, these are senseless fears. These are fears that are not productive fears. They're negative fears. They're what we would call a spirit of fear. Now, we laugh at some of these things, and some of the things that I mentioned are relatively harmless. But, dear friend, there, that, there are other fears, a spirit of fear that is not just relatively harmless, but deeply damaging and destructive and debilitating. The Bible speaks of the bondage of fear. And I want you to see the destructive power of the spirit of fear. And then I want you to see the delivering power of the spirit of faith. I want you to see how God... Uh, will set us free and, and how, how faith can face fear and, uh, and, and overcome, all right? Now, think about the destructive power of fear, the destructive power of the spirit of fear. I want you to notice three basic things that, that fear will do to anybody here. I'm talking about a spirit of fear, not productive fear, but I'm talking about destructive fear. Uh, for example... Uh, notice uh, what I'm going to call fear and forgetfulness. Notice in verse 6, the Apostle Paul says to Timothy, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Now, Timothy was a very gifted man, unusually equipped and anointed to do the work of God. 
He had a remarkable gift of God, but he failed to use it. And why did he fail to use the gift that he had? He had forgotten it. Now, so the Apostle Paul says, I put thee in remembrance. You've forgotten who you are. You have forgotten your ability. You have forgotten what God has done for you and what God wants to do through you. Timothy, you're a very gifted man, but you've forgotten. Now, what caused him to forget it was this, his fear. You see, look, if you will, and see how verses 6 and 7 are connected. Uh, he says, uh, Now, wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands for. Now, that little word for connects those two verses. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. Now, the idea is that fear had caused him to forget. When you focus on fear, then that takes all of the blue out of your sky and, and, and you don't see, you don't understand who you are or what you can do. And that, 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 that fear just causes you to forget all the blessings of God. Some of you are immensely gifted, tremendously blessed, but there's something you're afraid of, and it has caused you to forget all of the blessings and the giftings of God in your life. Because you have focused on your fear rather than trusting in the Lord and focusing on the Lord. Now, Timothy at this time didn't have much to be afraid of. If anybody had anything to be afraid of, it was Paul who wrote this. You know where Paul was when he wrote this? Paul was in prison. Now look in verse 8. He says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner. Now Paul was a prisoner of the Lord in the metaphorical sense in that he was a bond slave to the Lord Jesus, but he was also a prisoner in the literal sense in that he was in prison. Paul was in prison when he wrote this, perhaps waiting to be executed. But Paul is not quaking. Notice in verse 12, Paul says, For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Paul said, I know whose I am. I know what I've committed to the Lord. I'm in prison. Yes, I'm in prison. But look, it's all right. It's all right. Paul had not forgotten who God was and how great God was. Now, dear friend, Paul had his eyes focused on the Lord, and even though Paul is writing in prison, you can just feel the breath of heaven blowing through that prison. And if you're afraid today, if you're afraid today, I want to tell you, dear friend, that your fear, your fear is because you've forgotten who God is and what God has done for you. Okay? Now, let me move on. And talk to you not only about fear and forgetfulness, verse 6, but also fear and failure, verse 8. Notice in verse 8, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, or of me his prisoner. Now what had happened to Timothy was that Timothy had failed to share Christ, and he had failed to stand up for the Apostle Paul. Why? Paul was in prison, and Timothy was afraid of what might happen to him. And fear had shut his mouth. And fear had paralyzed him. Now, you, did you know, dear friend, that when we ought to succeed, many of us fail for one reason. Because we've listened to that sinister minister of fear, the devil, rather than listening to God, and that fear has paralyzed us, no matter how gifted we are. I heard of a man whose farm was failing, whose wife needed an operation, the mortgage on the farm was due, payment on the tractor was due, the tuition was due, the banks wouldn't loan him any money, he was an ordinary farmer, but he decided the only thing left for him to do was to rob a bank. And so he tried to get up his courage. Now remember, this wasn't his profession. So he's walking around the block trying to get up his courage, trying to get up his courage. He had it all figured out in his mind how he would do it. He had a bag for the teller to put the money in. He had a gun to frighten the teller with. And he had a little speech memorized. And so he walked into the bank and he got all confused because he was frightened to death. And rather than giving the teller that bag to put the money in, he shoved the gun to the teller. And then he took that loose bag and he pointed it at her. And he said to her, don't stick with me. This is a mess up. <laughs> a 
Now, folks, fear will do that to you. There are a lot of people, and many of them, who are sitting in this congregation today who have abilities that are unused and gifts that are buried and gifts that are forgotten. And I'll tell you why. Because you are afraid. Lisa sang so beautifully here this morning. She's gifted of the Lord. There may be another Lisa sitting out there who will never sing a solo because of fear. Do you stand up to sing and the icy fingers of fear grip your throat? There may be some Bible teachers out there. There may be some preachers out there. There may be some gifted people out there. But your gift will never be used. Not because you cannot but because you have been intimidated by fear. In Matthew chapter 25, Jesus gave the parable of the talents and how he gave to everyone different talents. And then there was one man who said, uh, I took your talent, Lord, and I hid it in the ground because I was afraid. Because I was afraid. How much buried talent there may be sitting in my congregation this morning, but you'll never succeed because of fear. And you're ashamed of, 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 of the testimony of the Lord. I dare say that most of my people here who are saved want to be soul winners. You know the major thing that keeps people from witnessing? It is not that they don't want to see people saved. It is not that they don't want to be used of God. Be honest. The major thing that shuts the mouths of most of us is fear. All right? Fear. Fear of failure. So many people are afraid they're going to uh, fail that they do fail. Have you ever gotten behind a person when you're driving who's afraid every light's going to turn red? And the time they get there, it has. You ever been around? I mean, they, they, they just, they project their failures. They, they are just ready to fail, and therefore, they do fail. And like Job, the thing that I feared has come upon me. And it is a built-in fear that just comes upon us, and we just project it on ourselves. Now, you don't have to be a weak person to be a fearful person. Strong people uh, sometimes are, are very much afraid. And uh, I... I was reading about Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar, who the shouts of the enemy were, were music to his ear, <laughs> Julius Caesar was afraid of thunder. And if it would thunder, he would want to get underground in a cave. It just would quake. Peter the Great, the great Tsar of Russia, a great political and military leader, was afraid to cross a bridge. And if he put one foot on a bridge, he'd begin to tremble like that. You see, ordinary people in some areas of their lives can be possessed by an extraordinary fear that will keep them from being what they ought to be. I wonder if you've been neutralized by fear. I wonder if they're not some of you businessmen who will never succeed in business. Because of fear. I wonder if, if there are not people here who have been shackled by the devil. The Bible speaks of those all their lifetime who are in bondage because of fear. Because of fear.